It's not about us. It's what we can do, what Blue Origin can do, is build a space vehicle that is so operable and commercial and inexpensive that it becomes the infrastructure that the next generation can use to take those big steps. Billionaires are taking their rivalries into outer space. Just take a look at the race between Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Richard Branson. For about three decades, the three multi-billionaires have started private space programs, launching thousands of satellites, developing space tourism, and even taking the first steps in building a human colony on Mars. But given the egos and ambition of these billionaire rivals, there have been quite a few problems along the way. So where has this space race gone wrong? Is private space exploration here to stay? And what benefits have we seen so far? Welcome back to Money Matters. When Neil Armstrong landed on the moon in 1969, he called it a huge leap for mankind. Since then, man has searched for the next major leap in space travel. Despite ongoing talk of colonies on Mars and the moon, space exploration stalled all through the 80s and 90s, fizzling out with the Cold War as it would appear that the unfriendly competition between the US and Russia was the only thing keeping the fire burning. Nevertheless, when the 2000s rolled around, a new age of space exploration was founded. A new private age, led by billionaires. So, let's meet the players, starting with Richard Branson. Branson has the reputation of being one of the most likable billionaires in the world. He was born in 1950, so he's old enough to have witnessed the Neil Armstrong landing on TV. Branson started his first business at age 16, and by age 22, he had a chain of record stores called Virgin Records. From there, he expanded into Virgin Railway, Virgin Airlines, Virgin Mobile, and finally Virgin Galactic, which was founded in 2004. The idea behind Virgin Galactic is pretty simple. Build a rocket plane that can fly people into suborbital space and bring them back to Earth safely. Here's how it works. The Virgin Galactic spacecraft is called the VSS Unity. It's comprised of the spaceship and the White Knight, which is designed like an airplane carrying another smaller airplane. This vehicle has a maximum capacity of eight people, including the two pilots, and relies on a specific rocket engine. The White Knight carrier travels up to 50,000 feet in the air before the spaceship carrying the passengers is detached. The spaceship then launches its rocket booster and travels at a maximum speed of 2,500 miles per hour until it breaks orbit. There, it suspends for about six minutes, and passengers can undo their seatbelt to experience low gravity and look out the window. After that, the spacecraft reignites and begins its descent back to Earth. It's a concise, tourist-like trip to space, and all Richard Branson is aiming for here is simple and safe space tourism. So far, Virgin Galactic has conducted a couple of commercial flights, demonstrating the process to private astronauts as well as officials from the Italian Air Force. A commendable feat, but nowhere near as ambitious as the other two billionaires in the space race. Like Branson, Jeff Bezos is a man that needs no introduction. He's the owner of Amazon and the second richest man in the world. He founded Blue Origin in the year 2000. Jeff Bezos was the starting point of this new age. During the first 15 years of Blue Origin, it would do almost nothing of note, despite having lofty aims to set up a space manufacturing industry where people can live and work in space their ultimate goal being to preserve the dwindling resources of Earth. This grand vision of Jeff Bezos might sound even more challenging when you discover that Blue Origin still hasn't sent a spaceship into orbit. Blue Origin has the company motto of Gradatum Ferociter, which is Latin for step-by-step step ferociously. 
clearly, they like to take things slow and steady. In recent years, however, they have seen success in their space tourism program. Their rocket, the New Shepard, reaches heights greater than the VSS Unity, and unlike the Virgin Galactic spacecraft, it doesn't have any pilots. The entire launch and landing sequence is done autonomously. Most importantly, it's one of the greenest suborbital rockets at this time, as the only combustion product from the engine is water vapor. Blue Origin also has in development the new Glenn, an orbital rocket that will allow the company to travel around the Earth, deliver satellites, and bring astronauts to the space station. The new Glenn is set to operate using a BE-4 engine, which they're also manufacturing for NASA. With this partnership, Jeff Bezos is aiming to be part of NASA's plan to land more people on the moon before the end of the decade. However, there is one figure that stands in his way. Elon Musk and SpaceX are currently the lifeblood of the private space industry. While Bezos and Branson are barely just putting out rockets for suborbital space tourism, SpaceX rockets have already completed several orbital missions. Created in 2002 with his PayPal money, Elon Musk's SpaceX was the opposite of Blue Origin. They came firing out the gates, developing their first rocket as early as 2006. By 2010, they had already had their first ever successful launch of their Falcon 9 rocket, making them the first private company to do so. They also became the first private company to dock their spacecraft at the International Space Station in 2012 and to land it back down safely on Earth in 2015. They even safely delivered two U.S. astronauts to the space station in 2020. In addition to all that, SpaceX has also launched thousands of satellites using the trusty Falcon 9. Those satellites are now part of Musk's internet business called Starlink and are available in specific countries across every continent. As for Musk's grand ambition for space travel, he's famously said, I want to put people on Mars and build a human colony on the planet. You gotta have uh, all the things necessary to sustain civilization on Mars. And the reason that those ships from Earth stopped coming could be World War III or it could be due to a slow decline of civilization. Even though Musk shares very different ideas for space travel from the other two billionaires, all three of them compete with each other for specific contracts, leading the private space industry to be extremely competitive, pushing each of them to the max in breaking new ground. Sometimes, however, it just becomes an ego exercise, where each man wants to flex on another billionaire publicly. For example, when Richard Branson took his trip to space on July 11, 2021 to demonstrate the readiness of his space tourism program, Jeff Bezos responded by taking a trip in his spacecraft to prove the exact same thing just nine days later. Public relations is pretty important for Blue Origin and Jeff Bezos. They've become the laughingstock of the private space industry due to the large amount of contracts they've lost to SpaceX. In 2021, Bezos even filed a legal case over one of the lost contracts, only to then lose the court battle too. It's safe to say Elon Musk enjoyed ridiculing him on Twitter. During the billionaire's relentless pursuit of success, they have sometimes pushed things too far. Amidst Elon Musk's plan to launch thousands of satellites into the Earth's orbit, He's upset quite a few astronomers who already complain that the increasing number of Starlink satellites are obstructing their view of outer space. SpaceX has also suffered several crashes and explosions in their bid to create the biggest spaceship ever seen. Richard Branson is also no stranger to dangerous testing, as they've seen many crashes and explosions in the development of their VSS Unity. Most notably was the crash of 2014 which killed one of the pilots and severely injured the other. And finally, Blue Origin has witnessed one too many explosions during failed tests. Their BE-4 engine exploded in Texas upon testing on June 30, 2023. 
This is worrying because the same engine is also being designed for use by NASA in their mission to return to the moon. The new Shepard also crashed on the desert floor in a research mission on September 21, 2022. Thankfully, the vessel was completely unmanned. Despite occasional problems and failed missions, the billionaire space race has mostly brought important progress. It has reawakened the hunger for space exploration while helping NASA and space agencies around the world. This ultimately will make space exploration cheaper and create lots of economic gain. The three billionaires are competing with each other, and we will soon find out who will make the biggest leap for mankind.